Good morning. My name is Tom Repke, and I'd like to welcome you to live.lindenroad.church. This is our digital home. I'd like to thank you for coming by, and if this is your first time here, we want to welcome you. It could help us just to get to know you a little bit more. If you would, there's a digital connection card that you could uh, actually click on and just ask you for your name and an email address. We would uh, love to send you just a couple more pieces of information about who we are and how you could be connected. And then you'll also notice along the bottom here, there's a, a live prayer button. Is there something we can be praying with you for or with and about? We would welcome that. Finally, those of you that have called this your home, uh, this new digital platform, you know, probably already in the chat. So we welcome you to, to log in. Uh, this morning's going to be about a 60 minute time together. We've got the incredible opportunity this morning to host uh, because of this COVID-19 shelter and home experiences that we're all living, leaning into, living through valleys that we're finding ourselves in right now. Fear that's out there. But how do we move into really understanding the valley that God is, is walking with us through? And we're going to take a little bit of a look at Psalm 23 and just some other things about what valleys are all about as we continue to move into this new normal. I want to talk about this morning uh, the God of the valleys, if you will. And just this idea as we find ourselves right now living in all sorts of unknowns, uh, one of the things I want us to sort of really hang on to is the idea, a simple concept. And, and Carrie sort of in the song Forever reminded us of just all that we have as sons and daughters of God. And, and that it's forever, the love that God offers us. And yet um, living in the goodness of that sometimes gets complicated, especially as we think about the season we find ourselves in right now. And so one of the, the scripture verses we always go to in moments of uncertainty is the 23rd Psalm. And he, he, let me just read it, uh, the first four verses. The Lord is my shepherd. I have everything I need. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the right paths for his name's sake. Even when I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. You see, we know so many things about the valleys because that's really where most of us live most of the time, right? We have these amazing experiences, and right now in our homes, <laughs> I'm sure there's all sorts of new experiences, right? Uh, just the idea of having been sheltering in place together in our homes for these six weeks have been a real test on all of us in just trying to find margins in our lives and ways when the places that we used to have to ourselves are now, if we've got a family, we're having to share those spaces 24-7, literally, when normally we would have our children off to school or we would be off to work. And so all the, those new adjustments we've had to make. And yet it's really trusting in the fact that God's word is something that we, we go back to time and time again. Uh, in uh, First Kings, uh, the writer says, "God said, because of the Syrian, because the Syrians think that I am only the God of the hills, and not that I'm God of the valleys, I'm going to give you victory over this huge army, so everyone will know that I am the Lord." You see, it's the valleys in which we walk through that we find where God works most intimately in our lives, right? And as we think about what this new normal is going to look like when we come out of it. And you can see even as we were trying over this last week with our governor and the director of health walking through just the details of what does this look like? And so we have masks and now we don't have masks and now we have masks by employees and, and just all that's there is they are so concerned too, rightfully so about our economic well-being, and realizing that if people aren't, are sheltering in home, then they're not working. And if they're not working, they're not producing. And if they're not producing, there isn't cash and all those things. And so it seems like we're really in a deep valley. And so as we know, even today with over a million people who are unemployed in Ohio and realizing that even out of that, those million people, there's still some 300,000 have yet to get their their uh, their registration with the, the unemployment offices so they can have uh, monies uh, to just pay bills. The news is filled each night, it seems, with people who are you know, missing house payments and car payments and struggling to find groceries. 
even this morning, I, a friend of mine in California who I'm going to introduce you to here in a moment, Adam, s- sent me a, a, a post, on, a message on Facebook wondering if I knew anybody in Columbus that could help a young man who is a single father with two young daughters who has lost his job and who has no monies and is about to be evicted and has no food. And so you just realize that the, this how small the world is, right? That somebody in California uh, gets a tweet, a, tw- a tweet that then reaches out to somebody in Ohio on Facebook who's an hour north. And so I've actually worked through a couple of my channels and sent a couple of emails and not quite sure how it might work out. But just how those things are now common and part of our ongoing life. And yet... Here's what we know, and so I just want to unpack a couple things about the valleys that we, we have to just be, be part of the, the truth of what they are. First of all, valleys are part of our life. It's just this is where we are uh, in so many different ways that we get the mountaintop experiences, whether it's a uh, family holiday or uh, vacation, uh, uh, just even a good meal with a, a family friend, how all those things right now have really been uh, tested as we shelter in place. But being reminded that um, even in the book of Deuteronomy, God says to the Israelites, the promised land you're about to enter in is a land of hills and valleys. And so even this land that the Israelites are going to inherit as they begin the promised land uh, pursuit, God even reminds them there in some simple words. Um, And then the writer of, of Peter reminds us too, don't be surprised when you're tested by troubles or painful suffering as if something unusual is happening to you. I mean, I think that's the thing that's so amazing about this global pandemic. Again, none of us have been through this. And again, it's such an incredible uh, world-changing perspective when we realize that everyone around the world is leading into the same uncertainty right now. And so with that, we just need to center on the truths of God's word, which we are doing here this morning. And so valleys are a part of our life, but then valleys happen to everyone, right? I mean, that's this idea of this pandemic, especially. The good man does not escape all troubles, the psalmist says. He has them too, but the Lord helps him in each and every one. And so that's really my encouragement to us as a church. I mean, Linden Road has been in the Mansfield community for over 200 years. And I'm sure that what we're experiencing right now, the, the, the founders, those original men and women, uh, had no idea that this is the way it was going to be. Uh, and so at least this idea of digital and uh, not being in our buildings and wondering when we're coming back to our buildings, all those kinds of things. And so, but the, the promise that they had is the same promise we have, is that the Lord is going to be there and he's going to walk with us through this. And those of us that call Linden Road home, we, we've seen that. We've seen that especially, I think, in the last year in just so many different ways. And I would even suggest that those that have called this their spiritual home for decades would say the same thing. They've seen the ebb and flow. But I think as a pastor, it's my responsibility just to call out and remind us and remember that God is a God of provision, and he has done that. So valleys are a part of our life. Valleys happen to everyone. And then valleys are unpredictable. It's interesting, the writer of Proverbs says, don't ever brag about tomorrow since you don't know what that day will bring forth, right? I mean, you think about just where we were two months ago and the things that if we could have gotten into a a time machine uh, back then and came forward to now and then gone back, and, you know, we would try to have explained to people, uh, to your, to your, to your uh, previous self, if you will, the, the idea that, okay, just so you know, um, don't really plan on doing anything for Easter. Like, don't get an Easter dress uh, because, yeah, we're not going anywhere for Easter. I'm not going to tell you why, because uh, you won't believe me. Or the idea that uh, every th- church in the world would have its doors closed for the most part. Or that businesses like our restaurants, our cafes, would be closed. And the reality of those kinds of things. Or the idea that uh, if you're a high school student, you would, and you're graduating this year, that you, 
that you wouldn't finish out your school in the, in the, in the classroom. I mean, just all those kinds of things. So we really need to just center this idea. We need to anticipate tomorrow in, in one way, but also know that what comes tomorrow is very unpredictable. And so we need to center ourselves in what is today. Now, <clears throat> there's a couple of different kinds of valleys in, in the Old Testament uh, that the, the scriptures talk about. And I'll just walk through this really quickly. There's the, the Valley of Siddim. It comes to us out of Genesis 14, which is basically uh, the Valley of Failure. Um, the valley was full of sticky tar pits. And when they tried to run away from the battle, they slipped and they fell into the pits. Um, there's the Valley of Eshul. that comes out of us uh, out of Numbers chapter 13. In your own eyes, we felt as small as grasshoppers next to them. That's the Valley of Fear. And then there's the Valley of Elah that comes to us out of the story of 1 Samuel. The Philistines occupied one hill and the Israelites another, and with the Valley of Elah between them. That's the Valley of Conflict. And then the Valley of Baca comes to us out of the book of Psalms. Blessed are those whose strength comes from the Lord as they pass through the Valley of Baca, weeping that they make it a place of springs. And that's the Valley of, of Grief and, and Barrenness. Now, what I want us to just think about for a moment is what, what to remember in a valley. I mean, the things as we walk through these times is to remember what? Well, first of all, to remember that you're not alone. I mean, as we heard there in Psalm 23, even when I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, the writer says. And David says, why? Because you are with me. Or Isaiah says to us, when you go through the deep waters in great trouble, I will be with you. When you go through the rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you, the prophet says. Or the psalmist says, as for me, God's presence is all I need. I've made the sovereign Lord my shelter. And you think about that in our particular time right now. And, I, and I'm particularly sensitive to just how many people who are, have been sheltering in place and don't have access to technology, who don't have email or web presence, the internet, to be able to connect with people who are outside. And the beauty of how these things can be so useful to connecting us, and even today it's interesting that there's now a new diagnosis because uh, people are spending so much time on the, the, the uh, applications like Zoom that it's actually called Zoom fatigue, where just because of the way our brains are wired, we really can't take a lot of this on a regular basis uh, because it's just hard. It's hard for and it's wearisome for our bodies to process. But yeah, we need to be reminded that in this whole thing, we're not alone. And then at the same time, too, and it goes back to something I said last week and this idea of remembering that God has a, has a good purpose for this valley, that whatever we're pushing through, not quite sure what, and I know there are some who have an opinion that God is causing this, there are some that have an opinion that God's allowing this, but this much we know, it is. And whatever God is, allow, is using it for, there is a purpose, because as Cody shared earlier in, in, in the worship set from Romans 8, there's certain promises there that we're reminded of on a regular basis. And even here Paul says, when we can even rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and that kind of hope does not disappoint us because God has poured his love into our hearts. See, again, it's these things that we see there's a process. And I don't know about you, sometimes I don't like the process, and sometimes I want to jump ahead. But we can see here from this uh, writing of Paul so to be reminding us that there's, there's a thing that we're working through. And so even in our suffering, as we're trying to figure out all these uncertainties, that we, we have to have hope, that we're people of hope. And so that's part of what I want to try to encourage us in that today, too. And then finally, we need to remember that uh, the reward that we're going to get um, will last forever. I mean, whatever we're pushing through now, we're reminded that this life is just preparation for the life to come. 
Uh, the writer, of, again, Paul, in his letter to the Corinthians says, For our present troubles are quite small, and they won't last very long. Yet they are producing in us an eternal glory that will last forever and is greater than anything we can imagine. And so, I don't know about you, but I couldn't have even imagined this global pandemic in my own mind. It just doesn't fit. And I think for all of us, we're still struggling to try to understand, even as we think about when do things go back online and when can we go back to the restaurant? I, I even heard today, for example, Disney uh, Corporation, as they're thinking about putting their amusement parks back online, they're talking about January of 2021. And even in doing that, the first day will be at 50% occupancy and that it'll be a six-month journey. And when you think about those kinds of things, they're just staggering to try to get your mind around. And then you think about your own journeys. And so that's the piece that, that our time of worship and uh, looking at God's word needs to remind us. And so one of the things I want to jump into here, uh, earlier today I had the opportunity to talk uh, with my friend Adam McLean. And Adam was the one that sent me the, 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 the message about trying to help a young person in Columbus that was working through some difficulties. But I just took that opportunity to reach out to Adam and say, tell me about a couple other things he's doing, because it's been amazing to see how he's been the kingdom, uh, the hands and feet of Jesus there. And he's in Southern California uh, near uh, San Diego because of the beauty of this technology. And so just check out this conversation we had. So I just thought it'd be kind of fun. We've been doing this neighboring thing. You know, you've modeled this so well. Just moments ago, you you sent me a link, you know, a question about somebody in Columbus. And I just think right. in, this, in this season of the technology at, at a whole new level, you know, the world's a really small place. Smaller. Talk a little bit about what you've been doing there. And Yeah, so primarily, um, I mean, I live in San Diego and I'm in charge of things for a mission organization down in Baja, California. And we've been, uh, we're well connected with a group of pastors um, down there and their pastor network. And um, yeah, so the situation is pretty, pretty basic in that, not basic, it's horrific in a lot of ways, but uh, they have the exact same stay at home orders that we have in San, here in San Diego, uh, where um, basically everyone was ordered to not go to work and to stay home. Um, but unlike in the United States, uh, there really isn't a social safety net. And so, um, that's really meant that families are being told to go home from work, but they're not getting unemployment or stimulus checks or, or any practical way to feed their families. And so they're suffering. And so, yeah, basically what we're doing is we're partnering with local churches uh, in Ensenada that we already had relationships with to deliver food uh, to those families that are in need. Um, so even though they have a job, they're told they can't go to work. And so they, they don't have any way to feed their families. So that's, we're kind of lifting up the local church because um, the church wants to do something. Uh, but of course, the church is in the same situation where they, they don't have any income either. So most churches um, in northern Mexico, the pastors are bivocational. So they might be an Uber driver or, you know, work at a factory and also be a pastor. So they don't have income either. So it's really hard for, for them to serve. So that's where we're coming alongside them. That's really cool. And so like last week, I just think it's amazing how you just sort of make the plea known and then the world shows up, right? <laughs> sort of. Yeah. It was, yeah. Last week. Um, yeah. I put out a video on Friday morning, um, just letting people know we were like $1,500 short. And, um, and yeah, like you said, the world showed up. Um, it was really, really in encouraging. You know, people were sending me money through our donation links and we ended up raising um, uh, about almost $3,000, which was That's great. Fantastic. Um, what was kind of funny is that, um, I had already decided we were going to spend more, <laughs> uh, because pastors are asking me like, Hey, I have another 25 families that I need to, to help, you know, what can you do? And I was like, personally, I was like, I'll just take the money out of my checking account and we'll just, we'll do it in faith. So I'd already made that decision when I found out that we'd actually had raised money to meet those needs, but yeah, but the same needs emerge. Last last week we served 125 families. I have 139 families right now asking for assistance. And um, and it's Friday again, and I got twenty six hundred dollars to raise today, and here we are. Okay. We're, we're in faith. <laughs> How do we make this sustainable? I mean, obviously you can't. I mean, I'm grateful that you're willing to lead and and yep. uh, you know take the risk. But on the other hand, it's like, what does this look like, and how are you going to do it? Yeah, I mean, there's a stay at home order in Mexico is at least through May thirtieth. 
And so that need actually gets worse every week, right? So families, their, their, their savings is, is running out. And um, so, yeah, it's not sustainable, to be perfectly honest. That was a conversation I was just having with my wife. It was like individual donations and $30 and $50, they're amazing. And it's incredible to watch what God is doing. But what we really need is churches to step up and to do special offerings or to do small foundations or different organizations. Um, I'm reaching out to, you know, larger, big organizations that have millions of dollars um, that I'm just not getting anywhere, to be honest. And so I think hopefully the solution is the local churches that maybe have some funds available or willing to do a special offering, um, stepping up and, and doing that. And, uh, and we'll see where we can go from there. I, I don't have big hopes that I'm going to find a foundation that's going to give me a million dollars right now. Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> Maybe there's a few churches that could do a couple thousand here and there, and that would that would be the difference maker as we try to get to June first. Right, and so you were saying, I think last week, and I'm going to guess the same today. What thirty dollars will feed a family? Yep, yeah. So it's about thirty, a little over thirty, seven hundred pesos. So the exchange rate is different all the time, but it's um, yeah, it's about thirty bucks, and that's enough food to um, to feed a family for about two two weeks, give or take. Small business owner, I mean, we're in that same spot of saying. When are things going to resume? Um, you know, I have friends that own restaurants and everything. And they're in, and we're all in the same spot, and we have all this uncertainty. And yeah, and yet I believe fundamentally in the church, and so I want to see churches thrive. Um, I've seen that over and over again. That when crisis hits, um, churches are the ones who respond, and um, and it's an opportunity for the gospel. That's I mean, that's as simple as it gets. And yet, at the same time, the church will prevail. Right, right. The gates of hell will not, you know, come against it. But it's like uh, in the midst of that, I've got to still live in it. So, yeah, the gates of hell might not prevail, but it sure felt like we visited. You know, yeah, and, we, uh, <laughs> sure. I think we've all we've all had those. You know, we've had moments of tears. You know, you're just in, you're feeling so alone um, and just feeling helpless and whatever. Yeah. And it's good to come together and to even in the midst of that pain choose to worship you know and i think in, in many ways it's been interesting to watch like what people are sharing right now is we're all going back to the basics you know of like the elemental things in our in our walk with jesus and um and that's been really cool to see you know it's a good reminder of like these are you know to kind of like paraphrase that old um that old hymn i mean these are the this is the, the solid rock we're standing on you know and right. um and it's never felt more solid um but also never felt like so much of a storm before so right no and that's, that's a good that that's a good analogy and, and a healthy tension um good thing is jesus sits on the throne and and it's always the details right so yeah yeah well, i appreciate your friendship and your time and i uh, today what's ahead of for you beyond raising money today what you got going on i'm here in the garden um you know i'm doing a lot of things um you know it's, it's planting season here in san diego and so one of the little things we're doing to help with our actual community where i live i'm, I'm on the uh on the board for the our neighborhood community and i'm where people are interested in gardening and so i'm i'm uh trying to make available myself and my expertise but also like we're growing i have over i have like two thousand seedlings right now of summer vegetables that i'm nurturing and selling off the <laughs> uh like you know i grew up in in northern indiana where when you would drive around the summer you'd see all those little roadside stands right, right. right? Um, which I adore and I have the exact same thing happening in my urban neighborhood in San Diego where I have a table out front. It's an honor jar. People have never, I've only had, I guess, one plant disappear. Um, but yeah, people are walking by or driving by or whatever and buying plants for their garden. And, and that's a cool way to serve them too. It is. Scout says hello. Hey scout. And what a dog's life. Yeah. Yeah. It's a hard life to be in a golden retriever. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, best to your family. And okay, uh, thank you for the time. Okay. Hey, have a good day. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. you. Bye. Bye. So I hope Adam's uh, conversation encouraged you. And I, and I just love Adam's heart. I've known him for about two decades now. And I've watched him really lean into leading just as a neighbor and doing some amazing things. And so there's a partnership with a, a nonprofit called Praying Pelican that is uh, the vehicle by which he's going into uh, that part of Mexico. And I know the need is great here in our area, but I, I think I just want you to see the, need, the need's great everywhere. And we can 
choose where to make our investments. And I, I would just love to be able to, to invest a little bit in next week's uh, uh, grocery shopping that Adam does, just as a way to encourage him and even more importantly to encourage some people that we'll never get a chance to meet, but I know we could be an incredible gift to them. And so this week is Giving Tuesday, uh, Global Giving Tuesday. And so on that day, I would love for us uh, to hop on to our online portal. And you can find it at, at, uh, on the giving link here on this page or just go uh, to lindenroad.church and there's a giving link there. Or you can drop a check in the mail um, or make a phone call and we'll send somebody by to pick up, pick up your, your generosity as a way to just to continue to pay attention here, particularly to the needs of those around us. This is really what the Great Commandment's all about, is loving our neighbors well. And so I want to just challenge you in that. I want to also say thank you for those of you that continually uh, invest in, in materially in this, in this outpost. Uh, I'm just blown away by just the, the continued generosity that even in this season with uncertainty, it's been such an encouragement in so many different ways. And so I just want to say thank you for that. So living in the goodness of God and realizing that God is the God of the valleys we walk through, I want to go back to Psalm 23. 23rd Psalm. This is the uh, Psalm of David. Psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I shall not want. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me besides, besides still waters. He restores my soul. He restores my soul. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. 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 He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Of righteousness for his name's sake. It's me in path of righteousness for his name's sake. Righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow, I fear no evil. I fear no evil. I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepares the table before me. Paris, the table before me in the presence of my enemy. Thou anointest my head with oil. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup overflows. My cup overflows. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. Mercy shall follow me. Follow me all the days of my life. All the days of my life. Then I shall dwell in the house of the Lord. The Lord forever. In the house of the Lord forever. 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 So thanks for spending some time with us today. Let us know how we can be helpful. I'll leave a comment. Click on the chat button. Uh, you can send us an email at hello at lindenroad.church. But let us know how we can help you do what God's calling you to do. Or if it's just something you want to talk about, please reach out to us. So blessings on your week. As a famous pastor used to say, you've been blessed to be a blessing. Go serve Christ in his name. Amen.